Hey, 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 awesome people. Welcome back. Mr. C here. We are continuing with our fraction series. Make sure if you learn anything new, click the like, click the subscribe button. Join us as we continue making math understandable and challenging. This video is going to focus more on the fourth grade learning standard of creating equivalent fractions. In this video, I'm going to specifically show you how to use multiplication to create equivalent fractions. All right. In the description below, you will find other fourth grade learning videos that we've already done for fractions. You'll also find the third grade playlist for fractions in the description below and we even went so far back to second grade all of those videos are in the description below check those out this video like i said is going to focus on creating equivalent fractions using multiplication let's get started all right before we jump into this first problem want to make sure i mention the right mindset. Make sure you have a growth mindset when we get started here. Remember, a growth mindset means that you are willing to take on a challenge, you're going to use your mistakes to help you grow, and your job is to find your mistakes and learn from them. All right, mistakes make our brain grow. You may not know this, you just don't know it yet. All right, make sure you have that mindset. So our video today is going to focus on creating equivalent fractions by using multiplication and I'm also gonna show you the division part of it as well, okay? So, on the screen, I've got the fraction 1 half. You see that right here, 1 half. And what I'm gonna show you is a really simple and efficient way to be able to create equivalent fractions. And if you followed us up to this point, we've done a lot of things so far with models. And I'm gonna show you some models today, but the focus of the video is gonna be how to create equivalent fractions using multiplication. So this strategy is a strategy you're really going to use from here on out. Um, this strategy is a great way to quickly find equivalent fractions, which is going to be really important whenever we start adding and subtracting, multiplying, and dividing fractions. It's going to be really, really important. Okay. So first things first let's do a little bit of multiplication here. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply the numerator and the denominator in our fraction one half. And here's the thing that you have to remember. All right, and I'm gonna write this off to the side. Okay, the thing that you have to remember is whatever you do to the numerator, you have to do the same thing to the denominator, all right? And that's gonna be really important. Now let me kind of explain that to you. So whatever you do to the numerator, do the same thing And this is a good note to kind of take down and hold on to because you're going to hear me say it all the time. You're probably have heard teachers or mom, dad, aunts, uncles, grandma, grandpas, whoever has kind of helped you with this at this point is going to kind of tell you the same thing. And so what that means, and this could also be vice versa. Let me put that here. Vice versa. So what that basically means is that whatever we're going to multiply this numerator by, we're gonna do the same exact thing to the denominator. Okay, and just stay with me here, and it's gonna be vice versa. Whatever we do to the denominator, we need to do the same thing to the numerator. So realistically, you could tell me any number to multiply by. Okay, you could tell me any number. You could tell me 30, 77, 129. You could tell me any number, but let's just make this problem really simple. All right, let's say we multiply by two. So we're gonna multiply the numerator by two. So let's do that. What is one times two? Get my blue color here. What is one times two? Well, that's two, all right? Now, we have to do something to the denominator. Do you have any ideas what we should do to the denominator? 
hopefully you're looking at this big old thing I wrote over here, the screen where I'm circling it. But what you have to do is whatever you multiply the numerator by, whatever we do to the top, we're gonna to do the same thing to the bottom. That's kind of a shortcut to kind of remember it. Whatever you do to the top, do the same thing to the bottom. So if I multiply the numerator by two, I'm gonna multiply the denominator by two. Okay, whatever I do to the top, I do to the bottom. So what's two times two? Well, two times two equals four. Let me change that color. Sorry about that, should have switched over, there we go. Two times two equals four. These two fractions are equivalent fractions. And we could show you that, we could prove it to you real quickly by drawing a model. I'm gonna draw two of these. All right, I'm gonna prove this to you, that one half and two fourths are equal because again, it's important to be able to know how to do the models part. All right, this top one, I will do one half. All right, so this is gonna be one half. So I need to divide this in half, color it in. Here we go. Here is one half. And now on this one, I'm gonna draw two fourths. Okay, so let me do two fourths here. Give me a second. There is one, two, three, and four. I need to color in two of those four. So let me color in two of the four. There we go. And this here represents two fourths. Notice the models, they're the same exact amount. This model is one half, this model is two fourths. One half and two fourths are equivalent fractions. Again, this strategy, this multiplication strategy is really simple and really effective. But what I do not want you to do is I do not want you to forget this right here, how to draw a model. That is so important, okay? Because being able to multiply it, you're gonna get to where you're really good at this. But I never want you to forget that Doing this multiplication, you can always check it by drawing a model. Always keep that in mind. It's never a bad idea to check your work with a model. Draw a picture. I always say, don't be afraid of counting on your fingers. Don't be afraid of drawing pictures. Use whatever strategies you need to to understand it. Okay, eventually you won't have to. You won't have to like draw pictures and do things like that. But if you need to do it, do it. Okay, everybody does math a little bit differently and that's a really cool thing, all right? I'll get off my soapbox there and I'll give you another problem, okay? So let's try another one. We're gonna do something very similar, okay? All right, second problem I've got for you here. The fraction I've got on the screen is the fraction 3 fourths and we want to make an equivalent fraction, okay? We wanna create an equivalent fraction. So to do that, I'm gonna draw on my arrows. I draw on my arrows just because it's a good way for me to remember what I'm doing and stuff. Some people don't, some people do. Find something that works for you. For me, I'm very much a visual person. That's why I draw pictures. That's why I draw in these arrows because it helps me to not make a mistake, okay? That's something that's really important. It helps me not make mistakes, so keep that in mind. Now, again, we could multiply by any number that we choose, okay? So let's say for this one, we multiply by, uh, let's go with, two again. All right, let's just go with two. That's a good way to kind of get us started. So if we multiply our numerator by two, because we're trying to find equivalent fractions, and one way we can do that is by multiplying, what is three times two? Well, three times two equals six. And again, we could multiply this by, if we wanted to, by four. We can multiply this by five. We can multiply it by 10. We can multiply it by any number that we wanted to. The only reason I'm choosing two is because that is just a really simple way for us to kind of get started, all right? So I multiplied the numerator by two. Does anybody have any ideas what I should multiply this denominator by? Any ideas what I should multiply the denominator by?
Okay, let's think about it. If I multiplied the numerator by 2, remember, whatever I do to the numerator, I've got to do the same thing to the denominator. So that means in this problem, I'm going to multiply the denominator by 2. So 4 times 2 gives us 8. All right, and that's another way you can do it. Again, this strategy, multiplication, it's going to be really simple and really efficient and really like quick. But what I want you to make sure you're doing is don't be afraid to draw a model to prove that you are correct. All right, I'm going to draw a model one more time just to prove to you that these two fractions are equivalent. Again, I just think this is important as we're getting started. I don't want you just multiplying like crazy just for the heck of it, being like, well, Mr. C said I could just multiply the numerator and denominator by the same number and blah, 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 blah. Slow, slow down. All right, let's just slow down. Let's make sure we're understanding this, okay? So this top model, I'm going to draw three-fourths. So let me see. Here's one, two three and four. All right, I need to color in three out of the four. So here we go. All right, that model there is three fourths. Write that on the screen. And then the bottom one down here, I'll break it up into eighths. So one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Color in six of the eight. There we go. Give me a second. I drew this one just a little bit too far. There we go. All right, here is six eighths. Take a look at these two models. Notice six eighths, three fourths. They are the same amount. Here is the math, the multiplication piece of it. Here is the model for it. Again, make sure you understand the model. Don't just roll into class and start multiplying like crazy. Believe me, I know you can do this, but I want to make sure that you understand the model part. Okay? Let me show you another one. All right, next problem I got for us here is we've got two-thirds, and we want to make an equivalent fraction for two-thirds. Feel free to pause me if you want to and give it a shot with any number of kind of what you think you should do and then join me and I'm going to kind of go through this one. All right. So maybe you tried this one on your own. Maybe you didn't and that's all right. But I want to kind of talk through this one. So we're creating equivalent fractions and to do so right now we've just been focusing on the multiplication. That's what we're going to do here again. So let me draw in my arrows. So... On the last two problems, I've had us multiplying by two. Well, for this one, I'm gonna have us multiply by, I'm gonna choose a different number. I'm gonna multiply us by five. Okay, again, you can multiply by any number that you choose. You can create an equivalent fraction by multiplying by two, by five, by 20, by 90, by 237, anything you wanna multiply it by. Do you usually multiply by 237? No, probably not, so don't worry about that. But let's do this. Let's multiply our denominator 3 times 5. All right, so let's multiply our denominator 3 times 5. What's 3 times 5? 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. That's what I'm getting there for the denominator. Now here's my question. I multiplied the denominator by 5. What do I need to do to the numerator? And this is the part where I always have to slow down because a lot of times when I do the denominator first, it throws people for a loop. They're like, oh, I'm, I'm like done. I put a two over here and boom, boom, boom. I'm done, Mr. C. Slow down, y'all. Remember, math is not about how fast you can do it. We don't care about how quickly you can do it. Because if you're first, you get the point, and if you're last, you get the point. The only thing I care about is you're doing the math correctly, all right? So I multiplied the denominator by 5. What should I multiply the numerator by? Well, whatever I do to the bottom, I do the same thing to the top. Whatever I do to the numerator, I do to the denominator. Whatever I do to the denominator, do it to the numerator. So what is 2 times 5? Well... 2 times 5 is 
two, four, six, eight, ten. Ten fifteenths would be our equivalent fraction. And again, I can draw a model here. I'm not going to. You can draw and prove it to yourself. I chose to multiply by five this time. I multiplied the numerator by five. I multiplied the denominator by five. So in this problem again, slow yourselves down. Don't rush through this. Multiply the numerator and denominator by the same number. Notice I multiplied them both by the same number. If you do that, this is a really simple way, an efficient way to create equivalent fractions. Make sure if you learned anything new, click the like button, click the subscribe, join us as we continue making math understandable and challenging. Check out our other videos in the description below. That's all I have for you today. Thanks for tuning in. Mr. C, out.